What is up guys? We are back on Shining Resonance Refrain. Etude of the Dragon Ears. I, I <laughs> like had a ma Magilus Cathedral. I had like a massive brain. I don't know, brain. Your Highness. I couldn't think. Expected. Had I been made aware of your arrival, I would have mustered the troops for inspection. I'm not here to inspect your men. I see. Then to what do we owe the honor? How long have military operations in Alfheim gone on now, Gjord? Eight? No, nine years? Nine years to see the Emperor's, my father's, will done. And somehow, victory yet eludes us. The Emperor wishes to convey his impatience. He desires results. To that end, I come bearing the burden of command. By the Emperor's will, the invasion of Alfheim continues under my supreme authority. Your Beowulf now obeys me. I'll hear objections. I have none, Your Highness. We of Beowulf, the Knight Sanguine, have thus far failed in delivering our Emperor his conquest. If His Majesty has seen fit to grant us a second chance, though undeserving, we humbly accept. Enough, then. Let's not speak of apologies and humility. Instead, let us speak of plans. As I transition into my new role as commander, I admit confusion on a matter I'd like explained. This boy, the alleged bearer of the Shining Dragon. I've reviewed all your compiled intelligence, and yet... Not one report in the lot mentioned the dragon at all. Not even in passing. Explain this to me. We judge that information unfit to be reported on, Your Highness. Not worth reporting? Surely I misheard. The mightiest of his kin, a legend amongst even other dragons. You mean to tell me the discovery of the Shining Dragon himself doesn't even deserve a footnote? Perhaps it's best I let the man I assigned to it explain. Joachim? Yes, yes, a perfectly understandable query. We heard rumors the child possessed the Shining Dragon, so we acquired him, yes. We've since spent a great deal of time observing his growth, but sadly we were unable to detect the Shining Dragon's energy signature. He still was able to channel pure dragon energy on his own, however. I was in the midst of running tests for that at the time. So hopefully it's clear why we chose as we did. The official reports are reserved for confirmed, verified intelligence only. Hmm. I see. I'll remember your discretion as I conduct my new duties. Still, the Shining Dragon. Can this power of mine tame even you, I wonder? Hey. We talking about the Shining Dragon in here? Like the special mythical one? Is he really all that? Hmm? Zest, you're late. Care to explain yourself? And show some respect. I'll not tolerate your lip in the presence of Her Highness. Already crawling up my back, Jorg. I'm not gonna be rude. Promise. Hey, Princess. You brought your Draco Machina with you, right? So between them and the Shining Dragon, who do you think is stronger, huh? Between the Shining Dragon and my three spears? I cannot say. He fled before any true test of strength could be had. But the Spears have already communed with me on this matter. They prescribe caution in dealing with him. Nothing more. I see. So he might actually be fun to play around with, is what you're saying. Like if your big fancy machina aren't up to snuff. Zest, I told you to mind your tongue. What? Just calling it like I see it. Zest. Fine, fine, I'll just go. Later. 
Yorg, who was that man? Ah, uh, oh, Zest. Yes, my strongest lieutenant. Strongest of all the Knights Sanguine, in fact. Yo, my phone just like... <laughs> my phone just lit up all of a sudden and started playing a video. I don't know what that was. Sorry. I see. That was so freaking weird. Also, you know, like, you know when you click, like, the side of the butt the side button on your phone, it lights up? Yeah, it did that, and then it was like, sh I thought I was getting a notification or something, and then all of a sudden it just unlocked and a video started playing. It's like some creepy stuff. Unless, fortunately, he has a certain temperament. As his captain, I regret to report his mood swings are... difficult to work around. Hmm. I thought I felt a measure of power in him. If he's as unruly as you say, that is misfortunate. Well, no matter. I have concluded my business here for the day. We'll continue planning on the morrow. Thy will be done, Highness. Before you go, though, Beatrice? Standing by, sir. I couldn't help but notice you didn't bring your retainers, Highness. Please. I would have you employ Beatrice instead. You'll find her capable. My name is Beatrice. It will, of course, be my pleasure to serve your highness. A bender of shadow? How fascinating. Very well, Beatrice. You may accompany me for the duration. Thy will be done. With me, then. Let's be off. Let me guess before you start. Don't leave her side for even a moment and make sure her every need is seen to. Something like that? Something like that. All right. We'll probably have some more we're going to have some more cut scenes with the not those aren't really cut scenes. I don't know what they're called, but we'll have some more of those here with our main actual characters and then <laughs> Maybe we'll get to some gameplay in this episode. Does it still hurt? You're safe now. I promise. What's going on? Hey, no moving. Stop. You'll reopen your wounds. I see. I'm having a dream, which means this is back then. Please. I know it hurts, but you can't move. Oh. No, no, no. If you're in that much pain. Oh, I know. I'll cast a spell to numb the pain, all right? Just hold still a moment longer. Here goes. Ready? That's right. I remember now. That girl, she... That girl. Her name, why can't I... remember? Radiance, you're awake. W where You're in Marga, your Radiance, the royal capital of Astoria. I see. And you're a uh, Kirika, right? Kirika Toa Alma of Wellant. I'm also known as the Diva Magica. Please call me Kirika, your Radiance. All right, Kirika. Nice to meet you. Diva like a singer, right? That song before. Just what is a Diva Magica? Oh, originally we were translators, I suppose. Divas once acted as bridges between men and dragons, communicating will and whim. When dragons still roamed the world, there was peace. They spoke to us, taught us, sang to us in their ancient rune songs. 
Though the dragons are gone now, and the skies over Alfheim are empty, we divas still play the songs in remembrance. A new diva magica begins training from a very early age, not just to master rune songs, but draconic lore, historical texts. That's how it was for me, anyway. I applied myself to my training, but it always felt... off. Empty. But then I met you, Your Radiance. I always knew you returned to us. That's why I've been studying, playing my heart out, and... and now you're really here! Uh, my apologies, Your Radiance. I allowed zeal to overcome me. Please, if I may serve you in any capacity, only say so. Uh, okay. Kirika, you know I'm not actually the Shining Dragon, right? My name is... I understand, Master Yuma. Perhaps not in fleshly form, but in spirit, you are the Shining Dragon. Okay, I'm the Shining Dragon. We'll go with that. Honestly, I'm just, I'm just glad to have someone, someone looking after me. Kirika's Treat Dragon Believer. Good morning, Kirika. How's he doing? Oh, oh, he's awake? Mom! Mom! And that was Primula. Her mother Emma runs this place. Ah. Uh, the Seagull Inn, I should say. Mom, look! Oh my, good to see your eyes open, dear. You gave us quite the fright when you wouldn't wake up, you know. I... I did? Um, thank you for looking after me, ma'am. Breakfast is ready, so why don't you come down and put something in your stomach? Oh, and the princess is here. Best not make her wait. The princess. In time, your radiance. I think you'll understand after you two have spoken. Hey, good morning. You had a rough night. Were you able to rest up? Hmm. What's wrong? You seem confused. I, uh... She said I was supposed to be meeting a princess down here... So, does that mean... A prin... Oh, for the love of... Hey, Emma, I told you not to call me princess in town. Hmm? Oh, right. I forgot. Sorry, dear. Hold on. Y you're... No way. You're a princess? Uh, what? Like it's that hard to believe? Here, why don't you let me introduce myself? Sonia Blanche, Crown Princess of Astoria and firstborn to the royal family. Pleased to meet you. M my name is Yuma Ilvern, Your Highness. It's a profound honor to meet you. Hey, nah, -uh. none of that. No highnesses. Just call me Sonia, okay? Y you got it. But uh, what's the Crown Princess kicking around a regular old inn for? Well, excuse us for being regular and old. We're the top inn in the city, thank you. And we've even got Dragoneer staying here. <laughs> Easy now, Primula. But she's right. I live here as the Dragoneer's caretaker. Dragoneers? That's what Excella and Kirika are, right? Are you a Dragoneer too? Uh, no. Not personally. It's more like I'm in training to become one. Something like that, anyway. So, um, Yuma... Weird question, but can we talk about your plans from here on? Your future? Sonia, I think it would be better if the king explained. We should escort his radiance to the castle before anything else. You're right. Can you come with us for a bit, Yuma? I'm a little uneasy about all this royalty stuff, but... It's not like I can refuse the people seeing to my every need. Okay. Wherever you want to go, point the way. Obtain Sonia's trait, Seagull in Guest. Welcome, Sir Yuma. I am Albert, King of Astoria. Thank you for making the journey to my humble home. 
Yes, sir. Oh, come, Sir Yuma. No need to be so stiff. Actually, if I may call you simply Yuma? Sure, that... that's fine, um, sir. Very good. Now, Yuma, I'm sure you have some guesses as to why you're here. The, um, the Shining Dragon, right? Then we're all on the same page. That's the short version, yes. However, let me first assure you of your freedom in this hall. Unlike the Empire, I have no intention of holding you against your will. Well, what a swell guy you are. You alone will choose whether to lend us your aid. And you alone will decide what shape that aid takes. That being said, if I may be so presumptuous, I would ask you for a particular kind of aid. The Shining Dragons, if it's yours to give. For nearly a decade now, Astoria has slowly bent and buckled under the Empire's boot heel. We're locked in a bad stalemate, to be frank with you. Marga's fortifications have seen that it remains standing for now. But we cannot place our faith in the walls forever. Then there are refugees fleeing occupied lands, and the poor souls left behind. They are my subjects, and I their king. I am duty-bound to protect them. I understand. I've seen the Empire do some terrible things out there. When I was at Galeritz, I saw... cruelty. All kinds of inhumane experiments. Will you help us? With the Shining Dragon's power, Alfheim could be free of Imperial influence. I want to stop them too, I really do. But I can't use the Shining Dragon's power to do it. It... it's too... To what? It's not like he's evil. He helped me and Kirika, remember? No, no, not evil. Ugh, then make a decision, why don't you? What does his power even mean to you, huh? It, uh, w well... Answer me! This is all about you, so why don't you say something? Uh, if you've come this far just to clam up, ugh, I don't understand you. Sonia, enough. Yuma can hardly make his own decisions when you lay the pressure on so thick. What? No, uh, I didn't mean... Uh, no, I'm sorry, Yuma. None of that was right of me to say. Please excuse my display. You know I don't mean to embarrass you in your own hall, Father. And Yuma, can you forgive me? I know you have your reasons, so if you don't want to use your power... No, it's okay. I should be the one apologizing. Hmm. In the end, the fault lies with me, I think. You did, after all, just escape from Imperial Prison. Perhaps I was wrong to push for answers when you've been left with only questions. Shall we take a break for now? A moment to think with clear heads would do us all well. You are dismissed, Yuma. Please, take whatever time you need. See the city, and return with your decision once you've made it. Fair? Yes, if you say so, Your Majesty. Sorry about that, I can be short-tempered sometimes. About the Shining Dragon, it's really up to you. Okay, but what about the war with the Empire? Oh, don't worry about that, we finally gained our footing. Hey, don't make the face, or that face. Oh, I know, I'll show you around the city, Yuma. Show me around, huh? That would be great, I've never been to such a big city before, so I'd like to check it out. Okay, good, let's go. Marga, the seaside capital. Marga is a flourishing coastal city and Astora's capital. It's home to many people, and the king's castle rests at its center. You can make use of the facilities here and interact with the citizens. Story icons. Things that can be examined, like the citizens of Marga, sometimes have a story icon displayed on them. To move the main event forward, look for the exclamation point icons. So can we... we can't talk to her. Welcome! Camera is a little slow. I don't really know what I'm looking for here. Let's go over here real quick. There's a concentration of people. Can you just interact with literally anyone you want? You Sonya's friend too? You don't look very bright. 
Wow. Wow, I see how things are. Would you like a forecast? Hmm, the clouds around Elmore Great would look like a little fishy today. Huh? But the Clavail Crags, the weather is as dry as ever. What is she doing? She sure has some unique taste in fashion. Hey, you. Huh? Me? Are you interested in the weather? No, you don't need to tell me. You're super interested, aren't you? No, I. No need to be shy. You have to be honest with yourself. Okay, I'll teach you about the weather. Stella is a scholar who studies the weather. She observes cloud patterns and will tell you about areas where the weather has changed. The types of monsters and the items you can collect will vary according to the weather. Try learning about the weather from her. You may discover something new. I feel like this is a later game, but see, you've, you learned a lot about the weather, didn't you? Uh, sort of. Good, good. Then come back and eat it again sometime and I'll teach you some more and I'm sure it'll come in handy. Okay, thanks. Okay. Let's just go to the main story. Oh, hi. Hi, you want something? Hi, Lizalot. Lizalot? <laughs> Lizalot? This is Yuma. He's a new friend. I'm showing him around the city. Hey, new guy. Charmed. Nice to meet you. If you want something, I'll sell it. You'd better have enough money, though. Lizalot's shop. Lizalot travels the world as a merchant buying and selling items. You will need gold to buy items. Gold can be obtained by defeating monsters and selling items. Make sure to prepare for your journey when traveling around Alfheim. She may look unfriendly, but she's not a bad person. You can buy a lot of useful stuff here. Let's go. See you later, Lizalot. Sure, later. Okay, shop icons. Characters who own shops or facilities have shop icons on them. Talk to them and make sh make use of their services. Okay, so she's a shop. There's a save point. Where is it? Um, I'm trying to. Okay, I don't know why I'm spinning my camera. That's not gonna help. Okay. Just a pinch of. Oops. Oh, Sonia, want me to whip something up? No, not today. I'm here to introduce the newest resident of the Seagull Inn. This is Yuma. Well, the name's Rappel. I'm an alchemist. Nice to meet ya. Likewise, but what's an alchemist? Wait, you don't even know what alchemy is? F fine. Listen up, alchemy's real useful. You can make everything from military weapons to day-to-day -to -day supplies, for instance. Rappel's Workshop. You can use materials at Rappel's Workshop to synthesize items and aspect pieces. With item synthesis, he will create potions and materials that will be useful on your journeys. With aspect synthesis, he will create aspect pieces that will come in handy in battle. So, as long as you bring me the materials, I can make anything you need. Okay, thanks for that. Heh, <laughs> you're the honest type, huh? I like you. You can have this. Obtain Vital. What's this? It's really pretty. That's an aspect piece. It gives you an aspect. And, well, let's just say it can make you powerful in all kinds of ways. Try sticking that on your weapon. I'll try it, thanks. <laughs> Come on, let's keep going. See you, Apple. Oh, Sonya, wait a sec. Wait a sec. Uh, when you get back to the sequel end, tell Primula you forgot your change last time. Don't be so ob oblivious. I'll uh, hold on to it for you, so please swing by and pick it up. Huh? Ah, uh, <laughs> okay, I'll tell her every word. <laughs> uh, okay, fine, I'm counting on you. See, Rapple. <laughs> That's pretty much all the major sights. Are you tired, Yuma? A little. I've never seen such a bustling city. Yeah, it's the capital of Astora, so you can get just about anything you need here. Thus far, we've been able to hold off the Empire, so residents of the city have been able to live here in peace. Alright, let's return to the Seagull Inn and rest. Okay. You always want that map up, but the big map is helpful too. 
Uh, here we go. This was an interesting episode, to say the least. Oh, welcome back. There's someone here to see you. Oh, is there? Uncle Burroughs, this is the boy I was talking about. Ah, about time. You're our dragon boy, then. The king filled me in. Call me Burroughs. How are you holding up? Hi. It's, uh, nice to meet you. Oh, forgive me, Yuma. I should have mentioned. This is Burroughs, captain of the Knights of Astoria and an old family friend. Captain, if you're making a visit to the Seagull, that must mean you've got work for the Dragoneers, right? Right you are, my lady. A hunting contract. Seems something big is out terrorizing folk beyond the walls. What, a monster? More than your knights can handle if you're asking for a Dragoneer to deal with it. Well, the Knights of Astoria... See, we've got our hands full with something else right now, so... I see. By all means, then, let's petition the Dragoneers! Hey, Sonia. There are other Dragoneers besides Kirika staying here, right? Three of them, all told, yeah. Kirika and two others all use the Seagull Inn as their base of operations. And when the Throne doesn't have official contracts to offer, they go around assisting the people of Marga instead. There's not a soul in Marga who can't tell you a story about a stout-hearted Dragoneer. You can always rely on them. Astoria owes generations of peace and comfort to their protection. By playing their harmonics, they can channel special magic and perform feats far beyond other people. All to keep the peace, of course. Harmonics? Is that what you call those instrument weapon things Kirika and Excella were using? Mm-hmm. Long ago, the Shining Dragon inside you gifted them to the Ancients so they could protect themselves. There are supposedly seven harmonic armaments in all, three of which are here in Astoria. The Elves of Wellant have another three. And the last one's in the care of that Imperial Princess. Wellant? Oh, but isn't that Kirika's homeland? What's she doing fighting for Astoria instead? Well, Astoria and Wellantine relations are peaceful. The Elves' ancestors lived here a long time ago, so we've been allies for generations. Obtain Sonya's trait, Dragoneer Caretaker. At any rate, I should go and see about this something big. You stay here where it's safe, Yuma. You're going all by yourself? I can't just demand a Dragoneer's time without doing any scouting first now, can I? It's my duty to aid them in my father's place, you know. Be that as it may, my lady. Maybe take Yuma with you all the same, just to be safe. What? Me? <laughs> don't worry, Captain Burroughs. It's just a scouting off. You don't have to be so protective. Ah. Uh. Emma, could you make Yuma some tea? I'll be back before it's cold. Ah, my lady, wait. And she's gone. Emma, why didn't you stop her? Now I have to figure my plans out all over again. Plans? What in the world are you talking about? Uh, nothing. Yeah, I didn't say a thing. <clears throat> now, how to fix this? Hey, Yuma! Little coward, are you letting the princess totter off into danger all on her own? Huh? B but she said she was just scouting, so... No excuses. Get after her right now, boy. Hop to... Wait, why? Why do I have to do this? I'd do as he says, Your Radiance. Sir Burroughs is a very stubborn man. Arguing will only make him grumpier. <sighs> fine, fine. I'll go. I'm going. Allow me to accompany you, Your Radiance. If we hurry, we should be able to catch up before Sonya reaches the gates. Oh, Yuma, would you hold on a moment? We lost the dialogue sound. Sure, what's wrong? <laughs> You're heading to the Windia Grasslands, aren't you? There are a lot of monsters there, so be careful. If you get tired, you can come back to Seagull Inn and rest any time, okay? Yes, if we return to the inn... Their mouth was moving, so I just lost audio there. Seagull Inn. 
Yuma and the party will stay at the Seagull Inn. The party's HP and MP can be restored by take, talking to Emma and resting. Make sure to rest often. Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Then, your radiance, let us go after Sonya. Hmm, be careful, you two. Wow, we're finally gonna get to some gameplay. <laughs> quest memo. You can open the quest memo by pressing right trigger. The quest memo has notes about the quests you've accepted and their current status. Traits and bonds. Traits and the, are the quirks and characteristics of each character. You can change them in the bond diagram menu. Characters next to each other on the bond diagram will form different bonds depending on the combination of their traits. The type of bond and its strength greatly affect the resonance that occurs during battle. Set up the traits the way you like and create your own bond diagram. You can view the tutorials at Seagull Inn at any time. Okay, where is she? I don't actually know. But uh, we're going to call it an episode here. I know that's kind of like a weird ending to the episode. Um, but uh, this is where we're going to call it. We got a save point here. Just seems like a good spot to call it. I don't actually know where we got to go. So we'll have to figure that out in the next episode. But I hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll catch you all then. Peace out.